Warning. This podcast is about the horror genre, specifically horror films. As most horror movies are filled with coarse language, violence, and or gore, the topics and language of the cast of the pod will also reflect the genre. If you have any issues with the aforementioned warnings, please press stop. But... If you have no issue with adult language, movie violence, or the accoutrement that accompanies horror films, please feel free to continue. You have been warned. As always, you have been warned. Hey, so welcome back to Cast of the Pod. In in Pod today, we have... Cobweb. And... And Deb. And me, Josh. Um... We're we're now the the regular cast for Cast of the Pod, the Dream Team. The Dream Team, exquisite air. There you go, there you go. Um, you can find us on social media for the, for Cast of the Pod at Cast of the Pod for everything. Um, then there's Deb, Mrs. OMG, Cobweb. You are Cobweb four eleven. That's right. And then I'm. Oh, you Met. just say it, say it like I always say four one one because I got that info for you. Yeah, there you go, there you go. See that? See that's why we should say our own things because I always get tripped up on Deborah's Deb misses OMG. You always get tripped up on it. And then I think four eleven because that's how tall Deborah is. But you know that's neither, <laughs> neither here nor there. <laughs> He's going here. <laughs> but um, it's been kind of hectic since the last time we talked. I was supposed to have a tooth pulled today, but then they then they were like, "Oh, we got to do a bone graft." But no, we don't want to do a bone graft. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it went from like one hundred fifty dollars to like seven hundred dollars to like ninety nine dollars then back up oh, to five hundred and it was like no 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 it's not a, it, we're, we're not negotiating to use car sale here right so, so i gotta find <laughs> i gotta find another place to go to we had a coupon or something right well, when, we had <laughs> made, when we had made the the appointment it was supposed to be like one set price for an extraction not for all this other kind of um surgery and all this other stuff it's supposed mm. to be a set price and i said okay this is what i'm gonna pay yes okay so i had that money put to the side and then they then they text today oh you have a balance yeah whole whole bunch of other stuff so we didn't do that but um so great and luckily we'll be able to do today's episode which is um event horizon spoiler alert Woo! one of my favorite movies yeah, it's a good one. It's do you one. do you remember what triggered us doing Event Horizon? Mm. Um, I think we were just talking about movies. It was some movie that this guy was in also, and you oh. called him Event Horizon. Well, what do you got, Deborah? Is it uh Samuel Jackson? Not Samuel Jackson. Lawrence Fishburne. Well, Samuel Jackson in the movie Death by Temptation. And we found out that it was done in, in Lawrence Fishburne, Fishburne's house, Larry's house. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, and then that's when we brought up that um, he was Cowboy Curtis, which that, that was a news bulletin for you, Cobb. <laughs> and uh, that just reminded me of Event Horizon, and thus, here we are. And that's when we had um, the word of the day. Oh, yeah, we're not going to go into that today. We're not going to get a word of the day today? Nope, not today. Jeez, Mr. Downpuss <laughs> over here. <laughs> get his tooth messed up. This is one of just rain on everybody's phone. Yes, it, 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 it's too warm. It's too hot in here. Let me open this up right here to be worrying about words of the day. And that, that's just too Fair. much. You want me to hit one extra button? That's too much production for me. <laughs> How about if I push it? No. Just one? No. <laughs> man, on. man, man, I'm still kind of, I'm, I'm pretty much almost recuperated back from the concert from Friday. I was going to ask, how's that going? You know, we're talking about my tooth over here. You know, what happened Friday? I know what happened Friday, Friday some of it, but you. Yeah, Friday was the, uh, the Chicago leg, I guess you could say, because it was in Tinley Park, though, of the New York State of Mind tour. Mm-hmm. Um, headlining Nas, Busta Rhymes, and Wu Tang Clan. Man. Man, let me tell you, they did it. That 
that tour, that show was everything you expected it to be. It had the intensity, it had the visual effects, it had the music, it had the hits, it was done very well. The, uh, they, they performed all, all their music great. I thought that it was, um, it was a really good show. Nice. A really good show. If you guys, if you guys see it in your town and your area coming through, I would buy a ticket. I would buy a ticket. Because I know at first when I looked it up, like the day before, there was still a lot of tickets available for our venue. By the time it came out, man, that place was sold out. So what, out. what was the highlight for you? What what was the the moment? Um I think it was when um one of them was when uh, Nas and Ghost and Ray came out and did verbal intercourse. That was a pretty good one. And uh, Nas, when he did Who World Is This? Mm-hmm. You know, um, he really, he really tore that. He, he really put in on that one. Nice. It was, I mean, there was no, there was no, no low points in the show. They just kept the energy going constantly. Busta Rhymes was, I mean, it's Busta Rhymes, man. The kid's <laughs> done well. The kid's done well for herself. Let's just say that, okay? <laughs> He's had that 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 complete health turnaround too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just sitting up there shining and smiling, like, look, hey, okay, I'm digging this. You know, he's like, I like this crowd here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you guys are okay, okay. It was many of those moments where they just looked back at us and just was like, thank you for coming. That's you know? cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Definitely work. I don't know. Maybe, maybe sooner or later. You, well, you've put out some clips, right? Yes. So we can put do... out some clips. This is some stuff on social media. Oh, okay. And Twitter for... in the Twitter atmosphere. And for that, they can go to Cobweb four one one and see what we're doing there. Yeah, yeah. You want to see some clips from the concert? Yeah, hit up Cobweb four one one on Instagram. You see some videos and some, um, you know, some good stuff, some photos. I threw the 411 instead, instead of the 411. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, just gonna keep it. Damn, I mean, how long have you been putting up with this? Um, <laughs> Let me see. In two weeks, will be 30 years. Yep. No, I'm just talking about since this two thing. Oh, 30 years? <laughs> <laughs> 30 years? <laughs> His two thing just recently. Just recently? Yeah. yeah. We can tell. We got oh. Mr. Serious Josh in the house today. It's hot, man. Like, it, it wasn't hot until we turned off the AC right before I went went online. And then, it, you know, usually it takes a while for the temperature to drop in here. Oh, for it to raise in here. And it's like, we, we hit stop, and a minute later, I was sweating already. I was like, damn it. And today, it didn't even break 90. But it's hot outside. Like, we were outside, and it's not the oh, heat. That's yes, that's what you guys are going through out there. It, I mean, it's a nice, cloudy day here in Chicago. Well, all this week we've had rain, so we hadn't seen the sun until today. Yeah, I decided to come back with a vengeance. Yeah, it was like, here I am. <laughs> Look at me. All right, there we go. Oh, let's let's talk. tell them. Don't forget, guys. If you guys are out there before we get into this. Remember that. Thor that, that, that is a very pretty cup right there. It is. I got to order Deborah one of those after I get my shirt. Is that Optimus Prime? Yeah, a li- li- little bitty Prime. He's got a little Prime in him. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, where did you see um, Event Horizon at? Where did you watch it? I watched it on I don't remember. I think I oh okay, yeah, I do remember. I pulled it up on um some kind of fire thing. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's on Amazon Prime to rent. Yeah, but that's to rent. Right. I had the the old DVD of it. It was on Paramount Plus, but I think they took it off. Yeah, it was. Recently. Yeah. Now, yeah. But, but talking about Prime, one of our next movies coming up, you told me about um, was um, The Woman. No, we have to do The Haunts next. I don't know. Look at Cobb's face. 
they're both pretty intense. All right, so the, the hunt. Woman, the woman, the woman, the woman will mess your head up because I mean, I mean, it's on the level of you know, it's pretty close to the sadness level. Almost. What? Let's yeah. not let's not get into it. Let's not get into it. Wait, wait until we see it. Wait until we see it. We'll go from there. It's in the same it's categories on Shutter. They put it on the same categories. And, and, it's in the same folder. So and that, it's on Shutter. That genre being, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Category. Like, what did I just watch? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> But so let's go into 1997s. I really didn't realize this movie was from 97. I thought it was from like late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, 97? Yeah, yeah, 1997. Wow. Event Horizon. Starring... Damn, how much was gas in 1997? Probably like $1.15, if not less. Uh, yeah. So this movie, though, stars Lawrence Fishburne, Sam Neill... Um, Kathleen Quinlan, Jolie Richardson, Richard T. Jones, Jack Noseworthy, Jason Isaacs, and Sean Pertry. Pert Pertry, who Deborah and I just recently saw Sean Pertry in uh, The Invitation yeah. last week's huh? episode. Yeah, we call him Alfred because yeah, he played Alfred, Alfred in Gotham, so he, he's always gonna be Alfred to me. Yep. Yeah. Like, Josh goes, You see who it is? I'm like, It's Alfred. I like this character in this movie. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get to his death scene because spoiler, just about everybody dies. Yeah, if they're not, they're going to be tormented for the rest of their lives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the, Event Horizon, come on, you don't have to worry about a spoiler. If you haven't watched Event Horizon by now, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Where if you've never listened to one of our podcasts. Right. So, so it's described as a rescue crew investigates a spaceship that disappeared into a black hole and has now returned with someone or something new aboard. I mean, technically that's it, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have described it that way. How would you describe it? Search and re, uh, search. What's the word I'm looking for? Search and rescue mission gone awry for ghost ship. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, that sounds better. I don't know. The other one, the, the, it was too oversimplified for the other one. So, do you know that the the director of this movie, um, Paul W. S. Anderson, they gave him this movie right after he did Mortal Kombat One. Really? And he didn't. Well, do- he did a lot better in this than he did Mortal Kombat. Let's just say that. I, I liked the first Mortal Kombat, but that was a PG rated thirteen PG thirteen rated movie. So he wanted to do something a little bit heavier. That's why he went into this one. And they were going to give him Mortal Kombat two, and they were going to give him X Men, but he turned both of those movies down so he could do this. Can you imagine the world now, the MCU now, or whatever, if it would have been a Michael W S Anderson X Men? Well, I'm not a big fan of, of Fox X-Men movies and all that, they, they kind of helped pave the way after Blade. If, if whoever made Blade would have just done movies like this, that would have been great. But um, after Blade, that's when X-Men came in, Spider-Man came in, and, and paved the way for, for our new MCU. But Yes. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, it might have been something different, you know? I mean, a different director, might have he might have put some edge on it that it needed. They wouldn't have all had those those leather biker outfits. (laughs) You know, I I, I can honestly say, I know we're we're talking about um, Event Horizon. Horizon. I I can't remember there have been, out of all the, there's been more misses than hits on the event, on the um, X Men movies. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easily. I think that's that's a uh, spoiler alert. (laughs) So. Bad X Men movie. <laughs> Going back to to Event Horizon, um, this was very, very early '90s, even though it was a late '90s movie with that long ass intro of just a black hole at the beginning, some kind of like vortex going on, all the names going up, not knowing what was going on in the movie, not knowing what's happening in the movie or anything like that. It's just like a blue, purplish, greenish 
vortex. And I mm-hmm. forgot I forgot about that. I forgot about the, the I don't know, maybe it was the version of the movie that I saw, but I swear I remember Sam Neill, Jurassic Park Sam Neill, waking up from that little nightmare he, little nightmare he was having into another nightmare, kind of like inception. Like a dream into a dream. Hmm. I don't remember that. Um Maybe that was in your CERN because honestly, they built a CERN. They built CERN on the ship in the movie. <laughs> that's in the movie. what I. That's what I told Josh. I was like, "Hey, isn't that what's happening now?" <laughs> we, we we have another CERN moment when we get to the end of the movie, but I'll, I'll wait till we finally get to that part. I know we jump around here at Cast of the Pod, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Yes, we'll, we'll talk yeah, about the movie a bit. To be all analytical. Me and Dev kind of like to. Yeah. Get in, but Maybe there's a robots. method to the madness. Man, my mother in law made some some stuffing. And <laughs> she made like Thanksgiving dinner, except with chicken instead, instead of turkey. turkey. And I man, I got some heartburn to burping up some stuffing right now. Like, oh, <laughs> m- m- might have to mute the mics. At, <laughs> might- in the middle of September, in the beginning of September. <laughs> my my mom makes turkey any time of the year. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. She, my my mom used to be a, a manager in a cafeteria, so she she's like, I want turkey today, and she'll make turkey. Just out of nowhere, she decides, to, yeah, she wants to, yeah. But anyways, regardless, going back to <laughs> Event Horizon, is there anything in this movie that strikes either one of y'all that, that caught y'all off guard or something unique about it? Something with this movie that 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 speaks to you? Oh, okay. Here's a question for you. So, was the ship calling to him from across the universe? I think so. Yep, I think so. That's why he was having that dream. Jeez. Why him? Because he made it. He he was the creator. He was the creator of the the drive and it figured And the ship knew this? Well, cuz it was alive, it was a sentient being. And this was the first time something like that was created. And then the, tr- the trauma of him not being around when he made it. That's why his wife killed him. That's why he spent so much, killed herself. That's why he spent so much time in it and so much of a sacrifice into it. And since it was, since as we find out later, a creature of hell, an alternate dimension, they don't say hell, but it's a dimension of chaos. That it was looking for something that could, could help repair the ship. That, that could help spread its chaos around the universe. Well, they actually do say from hell. Well, Lawrence Fishburne says that. Well, because they're translating what the person said in the in the video. In Latin, yeah, that's true. And he said, save yourself from, from hell. hell. Yeah. But that's kind of weird, though. I mean, then why did the event horizon... I, oh, am I jumping around again? Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. It's okay. Okay, why did it... No yawning. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of those days. Right. Why did Event Horizon kill everybody on the crew of the original ship then? It seemed like it would have needed somebody to be kept alive for the crew like it did the other one. Because it, it didn't know what to do with people. It, it, it didn't know it needed to protect them a little bit. Because as soon as they got that, that sadness, that sickness... They just went off. They lost all yeah. in, all inhibition and everything like that, and and. Is it like how um, what's his name Justin? He didn't want to see it anymore, so he wanted to jump off, of, jump out of the ship. Every, everyone reacts to that different side of their soul differently, and some of them embraced it. Some of them became monsters, and then some people just. He, he right. was he he was the baby he was the baby bear he was the innocent one that couldn't deal with. And then when he realized what he was doing, he was like, "No, I changed my mind." Well, because they, they the ship wanted it because it feed off their their fear and right. their terror, so that's why it brought him let him alone so we could see exactly what he did so we can get that you know that feeding. Yep. It's like Jeez. it's like an energy vampire, just like what's his name from what we do in the shadows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you haven't seen that, it's a comedy uh, created by Taika Waititi. No, I've not seen it. Yeah. You need to watch it. 
It's really good. Okay. It's kind of, it's kind of like the, put that on the list. kind of like the Office, but with vampires. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, 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 it don't make sense. You need to see it though. And there's a movie also. But the show's better. You know, I've learned, I've learned so much from being in the, on cast of the pod. That, that's why <laughs> that's why we need to spread our reach. So other right. people can learn. They right. Can learn Especially from. Josh with this vampire thing. I mean, he really wants to be a good vampire. I do too. <laughs> Who would not? Hey, you too. Wow. Okay. There we I go. do too. <laughs> who, who would not turn down the opportunity to, to, to be, be a vampire? To be immortal. To be immortal? Yes. Yeah. But, anyways, <laughs> back to Event Horizon. Back to the Event Horizon. Oh, oh, see, I man. wouldn't want to be like, I wouldn't want to be like evil and Here we all go. this stuff. But, Here you we know, go. a good vampire. Like, you know, Deb, I drop do it. For the good. Deb. Event Horizon, Lawrence Fishburne, Sam Neill, and then I can sparkle. <laughs> she ain't gonna stop once she get going, bro. Oh my god, man! Okay, so Lawrence Fishburne, Lawrence Fishburne, so, he played a great. He, he did was great in this movie. Yes, he was was very stoic, very to the point, very much the leader, very military. Even though they're saying that this was the version of the space. Um, they're not the space marines they were the space coast guard basically mm-hmm. but he he was very marine-ish yeah very, yeah but that's what you needed on that ship you know somebody that kept it by the book you know even like when i do because the doctor was on that bullshit yes yes from the beginning from yeah. the beginning he was on that bullshit i mean he was just so dismissive of everything that they said he had an answer oh i don't know what it is but it could be this bullshit you know and he just kept going like that all the time and it was just pissing them off i like the scene when lawrence fishburne tries to give him a chance and it's him and and cooper um one of lawrence fishburne's um officers he's the 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 rescue guy Mm -hmm. and he gives his opinion about what happened and uh, Sam Neill's all like, what's it? What's Sam Neill's name? Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Weir. Doctor Weir. Right. And, and Weir's like, he's like, no, no, he's probably hallucinating, probably whatever. And then just Cooper loses his shit, and um, Lawrence Fishburne is just like, nope, stop, stop. Now he's agreeing with Cooper, but he's still giving Doctor Weir a nice chance to say it. Here's whatever, blah blah blah. Change your wording on it. And he still doesn't do it. And Cooper Cooper kind of loses it again. And Lawrence Fishburne reels him back in. Yeah. yeah. You know what I understand, That was the second though? time he had to do that. On, on that part, that other guy, when he just grabbed him and he was like, I can stick this in your throat. Like, why was he doing that? He had whatever that thing he had in his throat. To Alfred. That was a ship. That was a ship. That was, that was the ship. Meant? The ship was doing that. Taking too. over people. Yeah. That was yeah, just that was an intense scene. That was already like in the beginning. He was like, that was just like um, Justin. That's that's the baby bear guy. Mm-hmm. That um, when he loses control of himself, everybody everybody gets a little taste of that, and and gets whole gets sees that other side and reacts differently to it. Yeah, all their little you know things that haunted them throughout their lives, their little skeletons they knew about. And he used it against them to uh, to get what it wanted. Even with that chick and her son, you know. What was with, um, what was with the other girl? Because there's two girls. There's Peters, who's she's the one with her son, and, and mm-hmm. she's in the medical side. And there's Stark. She's the, the other one. The one that that spoiler alert survives at the end. They never showed what she had to deal with until the end. But. You say they, they she survives at the end, but do they really? Yeah, her her and, and, and Cooper survive. Because No, they did not. Because the doors close while they're like where the rescue guy is. Well right that, there. that leaves it up to you. But and at, she at had first, that nightmare. Uh oh, here we go, here we go. Here it is. Think back to what the nightmare she had. She had the nightmare that her safe, the person that saved her was Weir behind a helmet. Mm-hmm. Dr. Right. Weir. But if you remember what Weir looked like in that, he had, he had his eyes. Yeah. 
He's right. Right. back to life. When she saw Weir, he didn't have eyes. So that was only, so he, she had to see him after the fact. That was not the same Weir that she saw during the time when she first encountered him. Because when she encountered him, he was blind. Mm-hmm. Remember, he had gouged out his eyes and he was shooting at him on the ship. So he, she never saw him with his eyes, with his face all messed up like that. But yet in her dream, she saw him with his eyes and everything all messed up, which was what Lawrence Fishburne saw him with later on. He's like, what happened to so, your eyes? Right. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that she actually did that. That she, um, that like Deb said, they didn't get away. Her and Cooper didn't get away. I, no. I think they might they have gotten still... away from another ship, but I think it followed them yeah. onto that other ship. So a- other anyone who may have not seen this movie, it's a rescue mission. They go out there. They find out that the the new person in their crew, this doctor, is the one that actually created the Event Horizon. The Event Horizon was a ship that was supposed to go off for like space exploration, and it blew up. But they find out it really didn't blow up, and it wasn't there for that same type of exploration. It was there to test a new type of warp engine. And as soon as they activated that warp engine, it disappeared. Now they're out there, 30 million clicks, according to to Captain Miller, away from anybody else. And they're slowly getting picked off one at a time. And then you find out about the original crew from the original, because they're on the Lewis and Clark. But you find out about the original crew. I thought that was kind of cool. When when they first board the ship and they haven't activated the the environmental yet, and she's like, I see a little blood here in the one of the consoles, and there's a few drops of blood like on a control panel, and she walks away, right. and then there's space lightning, and you see in the windows behind her, there's just like bodies eviscerated and just smeared all over the glass and skulls yeah. and everything I'm like, like that. Oh, that's a little bit more than a little bit. <laughs> a little blood. She she didn't notice all that. <laughs> There was a lot about that, this movie that was tripped out. You know what it was? What the main thing in this movie was? Nobody was really ready to go. Okay, they always had to go do something. Let me go get this. Let me go get that. Give me a couple more minutes thinking they had more time when they did. Me personally, I'd have my shit packed and was ready at the dump. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As far as possible on that ship. So so there's a mistake. A mistake that that stuck with me and I know it has to be in there because it's a movie but now we're in the realm of what I would have done or what you would have done or what Deb would have done okay now we're accepting we're in that movie's universe okay Captain Miller Lawrence Fishburne messed up when he told that crazy ass doctor he already knows it's the you know you know that he's going to try to find some way to stay with his ship or he's going to try to find, you know, cause it's his, it's his, his invention and he's mm-hmm. not going to be thinking about people or whatever. He's just going to be thinking about the quote unquote greater good of, of trying to figure out what's going on. But, um, when he told him we're going to get away from this ship and I'm going to shoot missiles at it and it's going to be done. Yeah. He didn't and, need to t- blow it out until it's done. He didn't need to tell him any of that. I thought that the same thing. If he would have just said, like, not said anything, just like walk away from him. Or he could have just, think so too. he could have just lied. You want to stay here? You can stay here. That's fine. We're leaving. Or not even lie. Just left that part out. Yeah. And then as yeah. soon as they left, boom, blow it up. Yeah. End of story. Everybody would have been all right. Doctor would have went crazy, but then they could have just either, you know, ejected him into space. Well, I don't think he would have put him to sleep. Him. I don't think he would have You know, because him. I thought the doctor couldn't be trusted. He's when when he was sitting there and he was about to open that door and the door was just banging like crazy or something like that. And a girl had to stop him at the end. At that point, I'd be like, I can't trust this fool for nothing. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And no, you can't leave him alone. You can't be trusted. And me personally, in movies, I always go by the buddy system. Okay? They should have never went nowhere else without anybody. I yeah. know when they you know, went into the ship at first and then they all went separate ways. I was like, why did why did the, they go separate ways? We're going to go on this giant quarter the size of a planet ship. we anything about and we're going to go separate. <laughs> why? <laughs> you, they would have, it was three of them. It would have been perfect for them to do like a triangle and everybody sees everything all over the place. You know what made me mad? And I know I just got through saying you're supposed to, it's a movie, you're supposed to accept the rules of a movie that they, they set up. 
it made me mad that old Alfred from Gotham, right, mm -hmm. had pictures of girls. <laughs> he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have an iPad. Like he really needs magazine photos. <laughs> and then, hey, and it then was when, on his his area. When he Doctor was decorating no 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 Doctor Weir and and then Peters, they're all looking at their kids and their families from back in the day and all that. Photos, just paper photos. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he didn't paper like photo. iPads and stuff like that. Because it's like, because if you're in space, you could have a power outage and you might not be able to see them. But in yeah. paper, you know, you got that physical copy. You can <laughs> solar, solar power, <laughs> everything's solar power. <laughs> but then later on, he's like, he's like, here's this recording. I may have got it wrong. Let me pull out my iPhone, and he plays it off his phone. Nobody noticed that. No, but I did. <laughs> so since we're jumping around about the movie I specifically remember here's we need to have a CERN moment a Mandela effect moment in every episode if it, if it really happens I don't want to make up any oh it's okay because this movie has CERN in it <laughs> <laughs> no so so whenever I, thing of CERN. When, yeah. whenever I have a Mandela effect a legit one we'll bring it up in the episode or if you have one we'll bring it up Deb if you have one but I don't want to make any fake ones up so okay. this this is my my Mandela effect moment. I swear, at the end of the movie, after they blow up the ship, Captain Weir's and uh, not Captain Weir, Doctor Weir is dead. Captain Miller happened to die along with him, right? Mm -hmm. After Cooper and Stark are found, right, and the doors close, I remember seeing Lawrence Fishburne being in his captain's chair and the chair turns around and it's 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 captain miller but his eyes are all scraped out i remember seeing him being like the new vessel i that's that's whoa that's a new one for me right there i i I wouldn't have thought that you would remember that. I don't even, that's a pretty good ending though. See, I don't know if it's, it's like the version I found somewhere out in the, the ether <laughs> or the, the author, the, cause it wasn't on my DVD. So, but I, I swear, I remember seeing Lawrence Fishburne with those scars and his, you know, turning around from his chair, just like, shh, and you see him. You don't have any alternate endings on there or extra clips. Nope. Nope. I searched for it. I searched for it just because it's like, where, where's that? Hmm. We All need, right. we need a sound effect for the, for the, the, the CERN of the day. Remix. You know what? See, see, see Deb. What? See, all right, exactly. He can hit his <laughs> buttons on for his stuff. <laughs> but when it comes to our words of the day, it, no, not today. You know what? That's we're gonna make a. We're gonna make a. Today. We're gonna make a word of the day anyway. We don't need a button. I can do my own button. <laughs> I'm looking for what sound effects are on here, now. just just to make y'all happy. What what's gonna be the word of the day? <laughs> 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 no, no, it, it, it's too late to look for a word of the day. Too late. Oh man, I'm a this long, episode's long. word of the day is CERN. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Can't just be saying CERN. Deb, just... <laughs> you almost made me, Matt almost made me drink, drink, drown over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so, all right. Got me spitting up ginger ale <laughs> with these damn jokes. Man, you have ginger ale right now? Yeah. We have a ginger ale shortage down here for what? some reason. Nobody drinks it down in South Texas except me, and now there's none anywhere. There's a ginger ale shortage? I, I don't know if there really I don't know if there really is, but for well, me. We can't find we can't, yeah, find, can't any. find any. So I'm looking right now at this Paul W.S. Anderson. That's the director. Uh, he did Resident Evil, Alien vs. Predator, all the Resident Evils, Death Race, the remake, Death Race 2, mm. Death Race Inferno, Monster Hunter, and The Lost Lands, which is in pre-production right now. That's as a writer. 
Da, 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 da. Did you know that there were, there were two alternate endings to Event Horizon? Where? Well, I, I looked up, is there an alternate ending? Google ass Deb. Yep. Yeah. You can't and, mess with Deb in the Googles, says, man. I don't know why you tried this. Why are you, why are you... <sighs> Deb is the Google. You know, it, it let says, her do her There job. were two alternate endings to Event Horizon. While neither radically alter the movie, they are intriguing in their own way. What are they? That's what I'm looking for right now. This mother... You didn't... <sighs> How but you they gonna, weren't used, and you can't it, find well, them. Well, they're not being used if they're not if you're not telling us. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can say there's 42 alternate endings, but if we don't get to find out what one of them was, <laughs> and if it's not Lawrence Fishburne with his eyes cut out, then it don't matter. Why are you even bringing it up? I'm gonna look for it right now, just to let you know there were alternate endings. Right, man. <laughs> hey, don't give me. You see this? This is what I deal with. Yeah, I understand. I mean, it's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Josh, you, you, you do realize it's, it's, it's the tooth, right? It, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's the tooth. That's the pain in my side. It's the tooth. <laughs> and so we're back. Nobody needed to know about that pee break. There. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Google break. The Google break. All right. But, oh man, is, is there anything in this movie? That either one of y'all would have changed, besides Lawrence Fishburne telling them, "Hey, we're gonna do this," and them not ready to leave. Yeah. I when a girl left after her son, that was like, "Man, come on, don't do that." You know, she's the doctor. Do she shouldn't. They already pointed out that they're crazy, and, and not that they're crazy. That it's making you see stuff, and the doctor of all people should have, yeah. You know, that ship killed her right there for a purpose. To feel that was blood on the altar. Yes. That was blood on the altar. She died right there at the footsteps of CERN. She was the blood sacrifice. What's that for? He said the word. Oh, I didn't hear. <laughs> uh, and, and, and if I wouldn't have hit it when she goes back and listens to this episode, then she'd have been like, you didn't even hit the sound effect when he said CERN. <laughs> Y'all were like, it's you your know. idea. Yeah, but y'all made it like we weren't gonna do it, so I forgot about it. It like jumped out of my head, and I was like, okay, we're not doing it. Yeah, I wish you'd forget <laughs> other stuff that easy. Like what? We ain't gonna go there. But anyway. Oh man, that was pretty <laughs> wild. I didn't. I liked um, <sighs> my man who was um, what was this Cooper? Yeah, the, the rescue guy. Yeah, when he got the rescue yeah, guy. Yeah, when he got stuck. Yeah, when he got stuck out there, and he was like, he didn't panic. You know, he got back to the ship. I thought that was pretty badass. He purged the tanks. He's like, I'm coming back, you motherfuckers. Hell yeah, that was pretty dope. <laughs> that was pretty dope. You know, I he, was he glad. Was a pretty good actor. I've seen him in some pretty good movies. He's been in a bunch of stuff, but I was glad that when Weir shot at him, I was like, no. But um, they showed that was like a, a rivet. You know, that's how he. That's how they were fixing the ship earlier. So when it hit the window, then the, rip, the 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 points came out on the other side. So it didn't hit him. It was just the air pressure that threw him back. Yeah. That junk was badass. Let's that see was what, totally badass. Let's see what else he's been in. Oh, I can tell you one off of hand. He's, he's one Jones. of Tyler Perry's guys. He was in... Um, his, his, see what? His, his biggest movies they're saying, though, is Vantage Point, Collateral, and Phone Booth. Along with Event Horizon. Mm. What was the name of it? Uh, Why did I get married? Parts one and two. Why did I get married? Yes. Those are pretty good. He plays a real asshole in those two movies. He was in Nar yeah. he, he was in Narcos also. I still haven't seen yeah. all of that. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Me and my, me, you know, me and the wife have a big debate about why did I get married? You know, that series right there. We have to do we might have to do one of those for the uh Bucket of popcorn. Oh Lord! And get ready for the arguments. <laughs> are you gonna invite them? Are you gonna invite the misses for that? We might. We might invite her for that one. That oh. might be one of those ones where we, you know, that's the, that's the one where you watch it and then you'd be like, okay, then couples start talking and start arguing. You know, if you listen to this podcast with your wife, that one, then you might be a problem. But Cooper's pretty good. <laughs> He's a great actor. Yes. Yes. 
He's a great actor. He, he knows his, his craft. You, you know who I didn't trust? I, I don't know what his name is. Let me go through here. The other doctor. Um, the one that put his, put the thing in, in Alfred's neck? Yeah, that, that, that he was giving them the, the vaccine shot? shot or whatever. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to end up being like a cyborg or a, a android or something like that. His name is Jason sure. Isaacs. And he was, his character's name was, let me go back. Got too many tabs open. His character's name was DJ. But he ended up, okay. being, I mean, that that's someone you hire if you want that, that evil bad guy in hiding look, look, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, but he didn't do that. But yeah. I guess maybe, maybe that was an alternate story that, I don't know. So on this alternate, Here she it, goes. it says, it doesn't say anything about Miller. Like, it just says it ends with, um, you know how uh, Dr. Weir, like, he turned into the, the guy that, that Lawrence Fishburne was, like, he felt guilty because he... The crewman that, that Lawrence Fishburne had left alone in a prior... It just says, prior. um... One of them sees the event Horizon Alternate Indians. One of them sees Weir's place taken over by a Korik, a crew member from one of Miller's previous missions who had to abandon Korik burned to death in Miller's haunted through, throughout by visions of the Burning Man. In this ending, Miller was coming face to burning face with the with his biggest regret, and Korik served as the final antagonist for the captain to overcome. It turns out the test audience preferred the wear centric version, which led to the use of the finale. Yeah, that would have been weak if if, if uh, Lawrence Fishburne would have had to deal with his the person he left behind. He had it's not like he left behind him left him behind for like being scared or anything like that. He had no other choice to save everybody else. He had to leave one person behind. Right. And the, yeah. He came to grips with that. He I'm, didn't want to leave that one chick behind. He told he's like I'm not leaving you behind. Dude, that that was there was plenty of jump scares, cheap scares in this movie. But that scene, because they had like a like a snow pick or snow axe or something like that for whatever reason, holding that door open, and then he was reaching through it, and they're showing it kind of bend a little, and they're showing it shake a little bit. And that was one that was the one scene. Even because we watched it today, mm-hmm. and, okay. and and me and Deb were just like, oh, get it, get it, get it, get it. We knew it wasn't going to cut him in half, but it still had that that feeling of anxiety of of you know. Yeah. Yeah, that was. I mean, it's all about time. They, every second counts. Every second counts. And it still amazed me, as much as they knew what was going on, that they took too much time getting out of that ship. And they and they broke off too quickly into groups. If that was just... That's I would have the- just been like, look, we need to get this. We all going. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's Everybody. Everybody. Gonna- yeah, even Cooper, he's like, let me get my tools. Man, fuck them goddamn tools. <laughs> you can buy some more. <laughs> right. We'll go to we'll go to, we'll go to Space Lowe's, Space <laughs> Home Depot. We'll get you some new tools. Right. Yeah, we'll get you. Some yeah, tools. let me get my tools. I'll be up in about two minutes. Let me get my tools. Man, no, man, we finna leave, yo. <laughs> we gone. Ain't no time for no tools. No, get your butt in here. We gone. Like he needed them anyway. So, especially, especially when at the end Miller, he went back. He's like, "Okay, you want to do this, Doctor Weir?" And they had like twelve of those rivet guns, and like thirty of the the rivet, the, the the spindle that he spins around and all that. What were we gonna say, Deb? What were we gonna say? If if he wouldn't have been like, "Give me two minutes, I'm gonna go get my tools," and if the other what's her name wouldn't have gone to go and chase her son. And if everybody would have just dropped what they were doing and go to the, the ship, would they have made it? Because they wouldn't have given Dr. Ware time to go to the ship, right? No, I think it would have killed all of them off. All of them off all at once. Because that's when Weir would have had his time to... Because he hmm. had that explosive device. But... But what? He was... Well, This was after this was after him and and Miller, right? The whole thing with yes. I don't know. I think they would have had a chance because he was still fighting with with him. We never know because because the director's cut of this, which 
was will never be seen because this is back the in the day. <laughs> this is back in the day when they used actual film, and afterwards, some of them just got thrown away. Some of it got hidden off into vaults and all that because certain companies own so much of the film. Like the a they own the physical copies of that. And, and afterwards, after this became a cult classic, they were like, well, let's do a director's cut. They couldn't find any of the footage to do a director's cut. Wow. Ain't that some shit? I believe it. I need to go back to day because apparently when you first see the event horizon, this is more IMDB trivia. And you know how they clamp on and they're like, oh, it's it's not a load bearing antenna. Don't And then he's like, it is now, doctor. And they, they clamp on. So when they do the flyby of the ship right before that, supposedly there's a full Star Wars X-Wing that's part of the model that makes up the event horizon. Alleg- really? Allegedly. I'm going to have to go look at that then. I'm going to go scene that's by a, scene. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a kernel of popcorn right there for you. Yep. That's a, that's a nice little kernel right there. I didn't know that. Look at Josh. <laughs> See, I, I can Google too. <laughs> You're Google Jr. Yeah. Be good to be. You did a good job. I'm proud of you. I'm proud. You know, that's some good information I have right there. So if anybody sees that out there, they can they definitely know that's the next one. Did you notice? And I couldn't find anything about it, but um, the the wife, Doctor Weir's wife, that had killed herself. Um, when they're they're walking through like the Matrix hallway, the the Matrix um air shafts she tells him something along the lines of I have so many things to show you which is basically pinheads we have such sights to show you yes Mm -hmm. remember when we saw that and then she says I have so and I finished the the yep dead finished line on it but Clive Barker was there Clive Barker was there to help on set oh that I didn't know And Hellraiser came out in 87, so it was 10 years before this one. So maybe it was a little homage. The The original drive was just going to be a black hole floating there in the middle of of nothing. And they used that spinning three-cylinder lit-up thing as a tribute to the, the boxes, the Cenobite boxes from um, Hellraiser. When it lines up, that's what the, that's the, is the same thing as when the cube would close up. That was their their tribute, their homage. Well, that's pretty cool. I didn't, you know, that's 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 some that's nice to know. I never even thought about that. That's um that all plays in a part. That, see, look at this. Look at Josh. <laughs> I can Google too. That 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 that's the shirt. That, that's the shirt. I can, I can Google, Google too. too. Yeah, that's this week's episode. <laughs> I can Google too. <laughs> ha- hashtag I can Google too. T O O. But I was also thinking about that, too, because when you see Weir, especially when he gets his eyes back, not when his eyes are all dug out and all that, but when he gets his eyes back, he looks like something out of Hellraiser. He does. It's like, what if this is all the same universe? What if they would have been able to tie this into the Cenobite universe? That's where the ship went. That's where Event Horizon was. Maybe if Hellraiser was not such a bad movie. (laughs) I have to I have to agree uh, I had a friend that was like oh you need to watch all the movies and I, I've i seen the first one and I was like you know what I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a, a day where I watch one after another I did one of those $12 and it has every like all Hellraiser movies in the, the CD the DVD pack so we have that so I started watching the first one and I was like eh you know and then I watched the second one. I didn't even finish the second one. I didn't like the first one. So, I'm so like, oh, everybody's like, "This movie's so scary. This movie's so scary." I'm like, "This is stupid." <laughs> not, not to get political or anything like that, but um, have you heard about the new Hellraiser? There's a new Hellraiser. There's a new Hellraiser, and I'm not sure if it's going to be on Hulu or if it's going to be on Shutter. I think it's on Hulu. Pinhead is female. Really? And the real life actor that plays Pinhead is a transgender female. In the new movie? 
you know, in real life, the the the, the person playing Pinhead, Pinhead, Pinhead in the in the show is female, and the actor that the person is is um, a transgender female. So, okay. not getting in, into any side of that, they asked the original person that played Pinhead. What do you think about them making Pinhead a woman? What do you think about the actor being transgender? You know what his reply was? What? Did nobody notice I was wearing a dress in every Pinhead movie? <laughs> Pin, Pinhead was wearing a dress in each one of the, the Hellraiser movies. <laughs> yeah. I kind of thought that about the whole concept, the character Pinhead anyway. It was kind of like, um, what do they call it? And, Binary or whatever these kids call it. Nine. I don't know what the hell this shit is. And, 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 <laughs> and me neither. Androgynous? Yeah, I don't know, man. Pin, Pinhead was just a demon, period. Period. Right. This world is, I don't, I don't know, man. I ain't trying to get a political. Well, I have no idea what the fuck's going on nowadays, man. <laughs> I, I know nothing, and I'm, I'm not going to try to pretend, unless we're on cast of the pod. And then I become an, a Google expert. <laughs> Why you gotta try to take everything from me? Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Come on, you that's can't what, that's just what give me this one thing. <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 what do we have? Anything else about Event Horizon? Um, tight. It's tight flick. Debra? I liked it. All right. Let's do our rating, our calculator rating. Cobweb? Or who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. All right. What do you give it? I give it an eight. All right. Deb? I give it a seven. What? What? I give it a seven. I give this movie an eight. Which drops it down to a 7.66. That's a good rating, Josh. Don't be upset. <laughs> okay, you want me to give it an eight? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We we, we can have the seven point. Ironically enough, seven point triple more more than three sixes. It's like seven point seven point six 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 seven. I gave it a seven because I'll, t- I'll take a picture of it right now. I I know. That I've seen it before, but I didn't remember it. Like, if you would have told me, like, if you would have asked me, do you remember Event Horizon? I'm like, yeah, I know I don't remember. I know I've seen it. I know um, Sam Neill was in it and Lawrence Fishburne, but I don't remember anything of it. But then when I watched it today, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this. But then it scared me on how I was like, hey, this is so much like what's happening. Like, Especially at the end, when when they when the ship. What's happening, Deborah? What what did you think? <laughs> and I'm not talking about rerun. What's happening? <laughs> that it was CERN. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is CERN. And <laughs> and and it just like I don't know if it scared me. Especially like at the end of the movie when when the when it exploded and the other ship took off, right? And then the leftover like it got eaten up by a black hole. And mm. so I was like, that's that, like it really scared me. That was the warp drive. That, but I mean this this movie had everything. It had sci-fi. It had horror. It had the mm-hmm. the drama of the mom and the kid. It had the drama of of baby bear, papa bear, and mama bear. Yeah, you know. Um, the graphics were alright, except that scene at the beginning when there's just random, just junk floating around in space, and they show the watch, and it's the same type of watch that Neil Armstrong had when he went to the moon, and then it shows a book, and the book is called "The Life and Times of W. S. Anderson," so it's an autobiography of the director. I didn't yeah. notice that. Yeah. But the graphics on that look really bad. It's like, do they need that scene? I mean, it once. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the director. Yeah. Then, then the other scene <laughs> when it showed when they show Sam Weir eating his his space cereal upside down right at the beginning, and the camera pulls back, and the 
the everything spinning around the space station is spinning around and i started getting dizzy and i'm like oh what? yeah that was like half the budget that throwaway scene was like half the cgi budget <laughs> <laughs> you thought it to throw it away. I thought it was cool. It, it made me sick. It just reminded me about that vertigo that I went through. But right. but did you know that even like the rapper Tech Nine, he had um, Liber- Liberate Me tattooed on his arms. Really? Yeah. Inspired by this oh. movie. And even though we fi- even though we find out, which I forgot about, and every time I see it over the past like five or six years every time i see it i'm thinking about oh yeah it's not liberate me he says liberate something something like he that's when he says i translated it wrong it's not save me it's save yourself and i'm like "Ah." (laughs) (laughs) but yeah that's all i've got that's all i've got this time for cast at the pod for event horizon y'all have anything else y'all want to throw in there I would catch it out if, if anybody out there watching it. I would definitely watch it. Uh, Definite rec- recommendation. Yes, I yes, agree. It's a good movie. Deb, you can tell your friends. You can tell your mom to watch it, Deb. Yes, um, mom, go watch it. Like she's listening to the podcast. <laughs> like her mom. Like her mom knows what, what a podcast is. She yeah, does. all my peeps out in Oklahoma, watch it. <laughs> I got to meet these Oklahoma people. <laughs> They're awesome out there in Oklahoma. All our pod people. All our pod people are great. You know, All the pod people are everywhere, you. yes. Yes, we need to hear more from you guys. You know, I've been getting a lot more requests from you guys out there. People that, you know, I see that like the pod and next thing you know, they send me friend requests. You know, keep, keep it coming. Keep it coming. I think the pod is awesome. If you guys think about it, what do you guys like, dislike? And I know there's not going to be too many dislikes. It's probably just going to be nothing that you like. It's probably like every damn thing. I can't yeah. wait until we do one of these live. Yes, we need to do one live. All right, so we're here at the end of the pod. You know, we already threw out our social medias, cast of the pod, Old Mary Gamer, Deb Mrs. OMG, Cobweb411, and um, thanks. I remembered. <laughs> Today we watched Event Good Horizon. Job, we gave it a high 7.6. We both, we, we all three of us recommend it. Yep. And uh, yeah, um, hit us up. Oh, we have a phone number. Did you know we have a phone number, Cobweb? A phone number to what? Cast of the Pod. Can you get that? Can you, got it. Can you we play got it? Sale? Can you oh. play it? So here's the number 786 763 2278. Somewhere in there it spells pod. What's the number? 786 763. Mm-hmm. 2278. You yeah. can call us directly, cast of the pod, and we'll answer. Well, Josh will answer. <laughs> Some, yeah. Deb, give me the phone. Say Deb. Deb. That's like, call that number. <laughs> I want to hear what, Leave us a voicemail message about what you guys think about this stuff, and we'll play them on air. 786 786- 763 2278. Better yet, we'll put the number up on the social medias. Yep. That way you can get it there. Yeah. And you just look for cast of the pod. All right. So until next time, I'm Josh. And I'm Deb. I'm and we're cast of the pod. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you more than you know. Peace. Bye, everybody. Peace out.